Rachel Wana. I'm Lubika Rawood. For more information on the work that we do and how you can help us to help others, please visit our website www.secondchances.org.za. In Junior Achievement South Africa, its focus is really to expose youngsters within high school and out of school to entrepreneurial thinking. And ours is focused at high school from grade 10 to 12. Uh, I'm very big on youth empowerment and making a difference and touching lives and impacting the lives of our young people. That's practically what I do with my foundation as well and ever since I was crowned as Miss Essay. The goal of the magazine is to basically share information that will be able to assist small business owners. You're listening to The Social Show with Viewer Chilwana and Lubika Rawood live on brandlive.co.za. A good morning to you. It is a beautiful day and it's not raining and I am happy. How are you doing, my <laughs> co-host? <laughs> I'm very well. I'm very doing very good. The, the cold hasn't gotten me. I, don't, I know a lot of people are... St- Got the sniffles and the and flus no. and stuff, and we're we're pretty okay. We're pretty, thank thank we're God. Pretty, we're pretty too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's get into our news. Lions are being killed in South Africa for their body parts, and pleas have been directed to the government to stop the illegal lion bone trade. Now, on Thursday, three lions were found poisoned and mutilated at Turfentain Farm near Polokwane. Police spokesperson Motafela Mojapelo said two male lions had their heads and paws cut off, and the third, a female, was not cut. Now, the motive for the latest incident is not known, he also later said. Uh, Kelly Moronek, manager of of the Endangered Wildlife Trust Carnival Conservation Program said they are very concerned about the increase in poaching incidents of lions. These incidents appear to be linked to the trade in uh, to the trade in their body parts, and we they do not have a good understanding of the trade in lion parts and what drives it. However, it is clear that the poaching is increasing. Uh, as an increasing threat to lions and needs to be urgently addressed. Now, similar killings have been reported on privately owned properties at Marble Hall, Zanin and Tabazimbi. In June last year, two white lions were killed in, a sh- in their shelter at the Zanin Lion and Predator Park in the Taba River Lodge. Three men were arrested near Palabora with the remains of one of the, white, of the two white lions. And two weeks ago, the park's own owner, Andre de Lang, uh, reported a a grisly scenario that greeted workers when the, they reported for duty. Now, three male lions had been killed at the park. Their legs and heads had been hacked off. And Delanga said he believed it had been an inside job because the poachers had to cut through three wire fences and bypass an advance alarm system to get in. Yeshiva Boys High School in Cape Town started the 2017 school year stationery by creating a charitable mannequin challenge. Now, the idea was that each of the boys brought items of stationery from home to be collected for an underprivileged school. The challenge is called Stationery for Stationery. Yeshiva College Boys High School posted their video online recently and it looks like they had a lot of fun for a good cause. In the video, you can see each of the students standing or posed like a mannequin holding their stationery donation in their hand. After the challenge was filmed, all the stationery was collected to be donated. The Boys High School went one step further and challenged not only the video viewer, but also the Yeshiva Girls High School. And the girls took up the Boys Challenge and a few days later, they posted their mannequin challenge online. The stationery collected by both schools is destined to go to a good uh, cause and help out an underprivileged school. The Girls High has also challenged all viewers to do a stationery for stationery challenge. Scientists have created the first human-pig hybrids in a breakthrough that could pave the way for doctors to grow an unlimited supply of organs for transplants. Now, in the past, scientists thought they might be able to use the organs of pigs, which are about the same size of those of humans, but they could not prevent the immune system from rejecting the animal tissue. An alternative was to use stem cells, which can become any cell in the body and grow new organs in the lab. But scientists have struggled to coax steam stem cells into complex 3D structures. Now, a team at the Salk Institute in U.S. has combined both concepts and shown it is possible to grow human tissue in a pig 
It took four years and 1,500 pig embryos and the stem cells from 40 people. Now, in a statement, they said they understand the effort involved um, and said that this was an important first step. Now, the next challenge is to guide the human cells into forming a particular organ in pigs. Uh, the ultimate goal is to grow functional and transplantable uh, tissues or organs in the pigs. In light of Donald Trump's new regulations against refugees and immigrants, the CEO of Starbucks is taking a stand showing that it's not okay to discriminate. The Starbucks CEO is taking a stand against the new regulations against Syrian refugees and the temporary ta travel bans that apply to six other Muslim-majority nations in America. Now, The executive order signed by President Donald Trump will restrict immigration to the United States of America. Howard Schultz wrote wrote a letter to all Starbucks employees stating that he planned to hire 10,000 refugees at Starbucks stores worldwide, including in America. Now, this came after many employees voiced their concerns about the human rights being threatened. There are more than 65 million citizens of the world recognized as refugees by the United Nations and Starbucks um, is currently developing plans to hire 10,000 of them over five years in the 75 countries around the world where Starbucks does business. And they still start this effort here in the United States, um, uh, Howard Schultz said, by making the initial focus of their hiring efforts on those individuals who have served with the United States troops as interpreters and support personnel in the various countries where the military has asked for such support. The Starbucks CEO also vowed to continue su support coffee growers in Mexico after trade with the country has been restructured. They plan to provide medical aid to employees that may be affected by the recall of Obamacare. Howard insisted that bridges should be built, not walled. And other companies are also joining Howard Schultz, such as the founder of Airbnb, who is offering free accommodation to refugees and anyone that is denied access to America. The co-founder of Google attended a protest and the CEO of Facebook, Apple and Microsoft have voiced their concern and disappointment via Twitter and other platforms. And that's our news wrap up for the day. Have you ever thought about the power of social media? Social media has the power to make your business grow. Grow! Why don't you let us manage your social media? Because our business is to see your business grow. Visit us at www.beastownmedia.co.za. Alrighty, so now if you were listening to our news, you, I'd, it's, I don't know, me and Libika actually were very shocked when we found out the news. Yeah. Um, and we thought this should be our point of departure for today's show and just speak about it a little bit more and find out what you guys think about, um, you know, such a really morally, ethically, socially, politically crazy, 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 crazy story. Now, um, I, if you heard the news, I did speak about, you know, this human pig hybrids that may be providing donor organs for people who um, are needing, you know, organs in, in, in real life. So basically what they're going to do is they're going to use pigs to grow the organs. So if it's a liver, if it's a kidney, they use the host, the pig as the host for the, um, uh, the, the, the whatever organ it is. Now, obviously, you know, genetically modified um, organisms, foods seem, you know, seem to be on the rise right now. But more than that, they've been, you know, around for years. I mean, people have been altering the genomes of plants and animals for years. And today, scientists can incorporate new genes, you know, from one species to a completely unrelated species without affecting the actual species. So that there's been a lot of um, really cool things that have been done. Mm -hmm. Within genetically modified, uh, you know, spectrum. I mean, from food to, um, I know corn is really most of it in the U.S. is genetically modified. Yeah. So there's been a lot of. Um, they th yeah. they say it's healthier actually it's, to mm. eat the genetically modified uh, tomatoes it? and that kind of thing. Is yep. It? Well, a lot of people say you know go green, go you know. So I, it's such a difficult thing to yeah. talk about because it's been happening and now it's really starting to come into fruition for human beings like to save lives mm. Libika uh, wow I don't know how I feel about this though um, but I don't know it, is it safe to say that 
this is just look. I understand that you will you a lot of people will say you know these uh, people who need a a a heart transplant, a kidney transplant have been on the waiting list for for many years. Yeah. You know, so so this will obviously cater to them and and bring uh, light at the end of the tunnel for them. But I want to know. Is this perhaps taking it too far? You know, taking an animal, using this animal for research purposes. Mm. I don't know if 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 this is okay. If anyone can actually have that authority to do that, you know, I, and and it's it's difficult. I don't even know how to speak about it intelligently because um, there's so many people opposed from so many points of views, and there's such great things that come from it as well that you really have to know both sides really well mm. before you can make a judgment. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to give you the pros and cons of mm. you know this new human pig hybrid um, that will be providing donor organs for people. Yep. Um, but I also think, you know, if pigs could, could actually speak, <sighs> we don't know. Maybe they wouldn't want to be, you know, uh, operated Tools. on. Yeah. You know, so I think, you know, if you want to do something, then get get approval from both parties. People are just using animals because they can't speak and they can't say no if they, they don't want to be operated on. But anyways, in 2007, there was a, a poll conducted that found that uh, 61% of the public supported the research after having the process and goals explained to them while a quarter was opposed to the research. Yeah. So 61% is... Uh, it's it's more than half yeah. of, of, of the population of the community. But um, so, so there are a lot of people, you know, that, that are for this. But I still feel like there are strong arguments on both sides, obviously, of the ethics. Mm. And, and, and personally, I think that... A lot of people will, or I've read actually reports, actually. I've read reports where a lot of people have said, you know, it's unnatural. It blurs the distinction between human beings and other animals. And it's also playing God. I mean, mm. if you look at, at, at um, uh, Muslim people, you know, we do not or see the pig as sacred or anything. A lot of people, a lot of Christian people don't even eat pork, mm. you know. So... How are you going to try and convince someone who sees the pig as as perhaps filthy for religious purposes, convince them to have something in their body that belonged to a pig before? It's a difficult question to answer, but I think, you know, what it all boils down to whether or not you think, whether or not you want to live or not, honestly. Um, because, you know, obviously um, these new... Um, these scientists are really coming up with new ways in which, you know, human beings can live longer. And um, and um, remember, you know, the we're not necessarily saying that um, this this is going to be a, 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 it's, it, it's going to be just a free for all. So anything you want to do to pigs, anything you want to yeah. do. It's a very limited procedure. It's a it's a procedure that's just for um, making sure that we can make new livers, make new kidneys, and then after that, you don't necessarily make the cells into you know human beings. So it never really reaches life. Okay. So, um, look, if a religious person is like, I don't eat pork, I don't really believe in pigs, I don't. They've got a religious. Say, they have that prerogative. Mm-hmm. They have the prerogative to say, I'm not going to be helped by a pig. I'm not going to get involved. However. You cannot deny the fact that that is an option, and if you choose not to take it, that is your that is your baby. We can't, you know, you can't really force anybody, which is the great thing, also, you know. And to show that cells from two different species can share one body in harmony, researchers have also created an, a lot of um, organs using mice and rats. Okay. Now they used a snazzy new genetic engineering tool called the CRI. SPR uh, or CAS9 uh, to break a few genes in mouse embryos that dashed their ability to develop several organs properly, including the pancreas, the heart, and the eye. Now, next, the researchers injected the embryos with the rat stem cells, then transferred the embryos into a mouse's uterus to develop. Um, so, the embryos developed into healthy animals with hybrid mouse rat organs and the researchers found that you know in fact that the the rat cells even developed into gallbladders in the mice despite the fact that rats don't even have these organs <laughs> and the animals all lived up to you know two years so i think 
it's risky, but it's 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 not as long as it's not damaging the 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 animal. I get that. I just feel like, look, if if we have the the choice of donating our organs when we die and that kind of thing, so it would just be ethical to if you want to uh, use something or someone for research purposes you should actually get the approval now a lot of people are saying you know animals they don't speak you know you, we don't care but that's what that's where i i feel mm. like it's not ethical yeah. because if they could speak maybe they wouldn't want to be operated on or used for research purposes if they would it's fine but i still feel like give give people and give animals a choice yeah. you're just taking a few pigs from some place and you you know doing research conducting research on them yes it's for good but it's still it's still unethical in my opinion i completely hear where you're coming from and i think you're right but if you think about it how many pigs die every single day from people just wanting their meat so th- th- it's, mm. it's quite a difficult thing to speak about and and of course so true. um you can look at it in your in your in your in your um, perspective, but you can also remember that neither human or animal rights are violated because most of these embryos and most of these um, um, whatever it is that they're trying to genetically modify will never actually become another human or another animal. So mm. there's never a real chance of you know scientists really breaking the ethical which i think the ethical barrier would have been them coming up with the new species and that's Mm. not what they're trying to do they're just trying to move the the human race forward scientifically in in terms of intelligent um information that they can get about human bodies and also how to prolong life right everyone wants to prolong their lives no one wants to die because of liver damage or heart failure i mean it's so unfair and if somebody can change that um i think it it's 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 worth it. However, just to, to, to back you up a little bit, my only, one of my serious issues is what happens to the pig mm. after the, the, the organ is, is manufactured. Mm. And I think they don't really discuss it a lot. They just talk about how they can help. But what happens to the pig? Do they still, is it eaten? Mm. <laughs> is, is it um, alive still to carry on? Um, is it, or is it just a box where you, you manufacture do, do, you know, organs. True, I agree with you, and um, I'm not sure if you if you mentioned something about they started this research in 2006. Yes, right? 2006. Yeah. Um. So I still feel like it's not a long enough time. Okay. To to kind of uh, see the side effects of this. I probably I agree. You know, because yes, it's good, and and I have no out in my mind that a lot of people I mean this you've been on if you've been on the waiting list for for a transport plant since 1995 and you know uh, scientists come up with this new thing even if it's a mixture of human and 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 an animal you, a lot of people are going to it, it kind of bring, gives them new hope yeah. so I've no doubt in my mind that a lot of people are going to I don't know if they're gonna have to pay a lot of money for this I don't know that's the thing but um I still feel like you haven't, they haven't really, they've said, okay, this is what we've come up with and we think this is the next big thing. This Mm. will uh, benefit a lot of people. But they haven't really tested it or I haven't really read reports where um, they've done this, they've put the heart or the liver or whatever in a human being and Mm. this human being has uh, lived for five years or ten years whatever the case may be so we don't know the side effects yet do you know what i mean no definitely and i think that's one of the biggest issues then how do we ever get to know what the side effects are without trying Mm. um so it's a matter of uh it's a catch-22 really because um they're coming up with a solution they're being met with a lot of ethical and religious opposition and then you know, people are like, you are not, You haven't been developing it. Like you said, you haven't been developing it enough for us to know what the side effects are. But then development has always been skewed and, and stopped because people have this, it's the same conversation over and over. Mm. So what is the what is it that needs to be done? Do we need volunteers to come in? Then that sounds a little bit like a, mm. a factory of humans that yeah. are being u- used as tests. It's like something then, in the Avengers where they... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They've actually been accused, these scientists have been accused for being monsters, you know, creating monsters. It's gone to that to that level. That's why I'm saying, sure. 
it's a catch 22 for a lot of science because they're trying to propel the human um the human you know life port, like lifespan further but they're being how are they going to do it effectively if they don't use humans so it's I don't know. You guys need to tell us what you think. We yeah. are, you know, a bit flabbergasted. We're a bit, we heard about it today mm. and we just thought, you know what? It's so important that we speak about it because we'd like to know, you know, 61%, like you said, um, oh, voted for it. For it. Mm. However, I'd really like to know who those people were and mm. where did they conduct that research? Was mm. it, how big was it? How big was the spectrum? Because, you know, it could have been a group of liberalists, you know, instead of a yeah. really, you know, so it could have been skewed. So, so we'd really like to know what you guys think. Um, please hit us up on our social mediums. Yeah, please do that because it's really, it's debatable. It's really debatable. But I want to know, I mean, they're using pigs for research. They've used mice and, and rats. rats. So what next? You know, what if they want to use dogs next? I mean, I have a little puppy. I mean, you, I don't, I don't want my puppy to be killed for research purposes <laughs> that's the thing what's next and i mean lo- we were talking about this before we got in here big money is going to be made if this mm. works and who are the people that are you know funding it who are yeah. the people that which corporates actually want this to work so that they can make money and also which ngos are, are behind this you know you'd obviously think it would be ngos within the health, uh, uh, you know, faculty, Sector, yeah. exactly, or uh, animal rights. It's, it's, it's got such potential to blow up in people's faces because there's so many uh, ethical lines that are blurred. So I really would like to see how this all plans out and, and, and I'd really like to know who's funding this research. I think it'd be very, be very interesting to mm-hmm. find out who, who really wants to push for this to work. Yeah. But uh, you know what? Sometimes when you um, need something as important as a new heart or a kidney and someone brings this to the table, I just hope Mm. that, you know, it benefits them and the people who are going to be using these transplants live a long life, you know? Because there's nothing worse than signing off. Obviously, they're going to sign indemnity forms and that kind of thing. Signing off your loved one and it just doesn't it work doesn't out. work. Uh, because we know that even a, a, a human uh, transport, 100% human heart or kidney um, can also go wrong. Because the body Definitely. can reject it. Definitely. So, we'll, we'll just... Uh, read the news, keep up to date, and and let read you guys the know. reports. No. Yeah, and we'll let you guys know. And yeah, I think it's I think it's very interesting, and it's very interesting that's coming out now. Um, also, just going back to what you were saying, just to close up, mm. um, it's really also playing on people's desperateness, right? Yes, and that I think is also another ethical uh, standpoint. I mean, if you're lying in a bed, and they're saying you're gonna die. You're going to die because your liver has stopped working. And, you know, you have kids at home. And then somebody says, look, we've been doing these uh, donor, you know, genetically modified uh, organs and we could potentially work on you. Um, that desperateness, that that th- that desperate, that desperate family that really wants their father or their mother to get better mm. will definitely support and vote for it, right? Mm. So it's so hectic on that level as well that if you are working with people who are already suffering, you're working with people who just... Like you said, hope. Mm-hmm. Hope can light up fires and, and 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 can ignite so much in people and they will do anything in you know the in 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 in, in the light of a hope. In mm-hmm. in faith, you know, that I kind agree of thing. With you. So they're also playing on that and that's where I think the God element comes in. Are you playing yeah. on people's emotions and how much can you get from them to support? So as we said, you know, um, hit us up on our social mediums and tell us what you think about this new wave uh, that's coming mm-hmm. into, you know, fruition right now of human pig hybrids that may provide donor organs. And let us know what you think. We are interested to know. Definitely. So please uh, use, don't forget to use the hashtags brand live and social show. Yes. And we're on so, uh, Twitter at social one TV and Instagram TV underscore CSI. And on Facebook, social TV. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this really debatable topic. Really, really, really debatable. So we'll, you'll hear from us tomorrow. Have a good one.
Have you ever thought about the power of social media? Social media has the power to make your business grow. Grow! Why don't you let us manage your social media? Because our business is to see your business grow. Visit us at www.beastownmedia.co.za